Coming up, a Sad Styles production. Get into it! And welcome to the Retrograde Video Game Podcast, where this week we talk about some of our favorite gaming peripherals. Oh my goodness. My name is Andrew Baskin, and with me as always is the bad boy of podcasting, Mr. Bebop himself, Mikey Add-on Aaronworth. <laughs> Your two ninety nine extra? My two ninety nine. Oh, yes. Wouldn't yes, that be great if it wasn't add-on? Just It was just me going like, uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the thing is, and you just don't hear your side, uh-huh. and it's like, if you pay two ninety nine, you get oh, the you other get host. To hear the, you're talking yeah. about like our actual voices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be fantastic. I love I'm it. sure they would love Dude, it. Cha-ching, cha-ching, baby. I, I remember when we first started doing this podcast. Uh, um, 19, um, two minutes, 94? 94, <laughs> yeah, yeah. must have been 94. Like yeah, yeah. It was called vinyl. We had to press them all onto vinyl <laughs> and send them out to our listeners. It was the, really the first subscription service mm-hmm. of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, we mm-hmm. were the Columbia Record House. Yes. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're still paying our I can't figure out how to cancel. I can't do it. Um, uh, when we first started, I remember one of the episodes we edited by accident, we did on uh, in stereo where <laughs> your voice was on one side and my voice is on the other. And someone, someone reached out and they were like, it's only Andrew's voice. And I was like, you got two years, bitch. <laughs> got it's an interesting it. choice you guys made. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, wouldn't that be like more immersive? I think it sounds kind of lovely, but it would be a little bit of like devil and angel on your shoulders yelling at each other. Wh- who would be the devil? Who would be the angel? I think I'm the devil. Nice. I think so. I think. Well, you're the bad boy of podcast. I that's it, man. Yeah. I've got you can in in one year you hear yourself and the other yeah. you hear my leather jacket and all the straps going around <laughs> yeah. everywhere because you I'm hear a- deep inhales of a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> man, yeah. here's can we talk about this finally? Please. It's been a long time. Oh my goodness. Got something I have to get off his chest here. Smoking is cool as fuck. Smoking is so cool. <laughs> Smoking is so cool. It is just cool and I think it's cool mostly because you're like They don't even fucking care. They don't care at all. And that's awesome. They're living for the now. Because I am riddled with caring way too much about everything. I walk by someone smoking and I'm like, I should see a doctor now. (laughs) They're like, I'll see a doctor in 60 years from now when I'm dead. (laughs) They will outlive me. That's the weird part. Like just anxiety will just ruin my body. And this guy just like, I could care less. And it's like, it's always like you always see like a. Alabama great grandmother lives to 103 and she's like, what was the secret? And she's like, first of all, I got the skin like, uh, like a <laughs> car store statue and uh, and just like, like, yeah, I smoke two packs a day and yeah. I drink uh, four liters of Mountain Dew and that's the way it goes. And you're like, her her infrastructure is so tight. Yes. That if she changed just a little bit, she would just not only drop dead, she would explode. It's like the uh, the Mr. Burns thing. Yes. Where it's, yes, it's yes. like you have so many diseases that <laughs> they're all preventing themselves I'm from affecting you. I'm invincible. <laughs> no, God, no. Just one small thing. I'm invincible. Let's Very put this good. on the record, Andrew. How old are you living till? Predict your year. 72. That's... It's because it's not long. Like, it, that's still within... Uh, Do you think that's a long enough time? I, that See, that's more of a question. Of, how old is, is your, your, how old is your dad? My dad is 60... Eight? Yeah, so or imagine only having nine. four years. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. You know what I mean? Like that's because yeah. I've I've started, you know, when you hear you're like this person died and they were 40 years yeah. old, 50 years old, you're like, oh shit, that's that's young. And then you hear there is the age where you're like, well, okay. And so like, we're getting there. We're getting there. And 75 is is around like that's that's like you can't complain. You can't complain. I you know a good it's, run. It is one of those dark conversations I think I've had with my player one where I'm like, we get a call for one of our siblings at a weird time of the night. You have to be okay with this. Like yes. it has to be like, well, yeah. All right. <clears throat> You're saying you have to be okay with your parents dying? Well, you have to be like, no, what? Like this can't, we're getting to the age where this is very much an option. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. Like they fell. You're like, yep, that well, might be a thing that like, happens. like, don't be okay with it necessarily. No, no, I'm not pumping my fist. No, no, no you need to take it out on the world for a little bit. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> Start smoking. I'm pumping my fist into some drywall. That's what I'm doing. Oh, nice. Yeah. Absolutely. That's yeah, a really yeah. tough move. Because drywall's not hard. <laughs> well, I'm not going to punch a brick wall. I've got to take care uh, of these puppies. Yeah. <laughs> these registered weapons. <laughs> I've had, I had a friend that said, just one, uh, I don't even know if it counts fully, but is that I've had a friend that said one of their friends Mm -hmm. is a, is a like double black belt or something Uh and does register their hands when they go through like TSA. (laughs) And I looked them down the eye. I'm like, that's not a real thing. That's not a real thing. That is not a, that's not a real thing. Yeah. They watch too much John Glenn Van Damme growing up. Yeah. And they're like, "Mm, no, I think it's a real thing. I'm like, no, I'm telling you right now, he found the one friend that he could pull this on and he's feeling great about it. So good about it. If you were a double black belt though, would you go through TSA and be like, do you think I have to register these? Yeah. I would go through and like, I would, I would have like a, a a, a sheet of metal, like aluminum Mm -hmm. foil and I would wrap I would I would wrap it using my black belt so that the TSA agent had to pull it out. I'd be like, I'm sorry, 
I'll admit this now. I didn't register my weapon, my, my deadly weapons. If I pull this close to my face, you're allowed to shoot me like that. You're allowed to like draw your weapon. He comes out just wearing like, just like not like boxing gloves, but like hard shells yeah. over there. Like, like they're like Hannibal Lecter getting wheeled yeah, into the yeah, courtroom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just like, I'm sorry. I can't pull these out. You're these like, are dangerous even for me. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I don't know what they might do. The last <laughs> time like I masturbated. <laughs> Yeah, the last time I masturbated. I don't have a penis anymore. It's I, gone. I do like the idea that you go through, uh, you have the black belt and you're like, I didn't register my deadly weapons. They're like, that's not, you don't have to do that. You're like, okay, you walk through the metal detector. It blares off. You're like, this is my gun. You said I didn't have to register. <laughs> Everybody down. Just kidding. It's it's a way it's a way of getting by with having a gun. It's going like these hands. Yes. Deadly weapons. Honestly, I I imagine like if, if life had an autosave or a quick save feature, not autosave, because autosave can really fuck you over in some points, but yeah. a quick save feature. Sure. And you could just test what would happen if you went through TSA and said something really weird like yes. that. That's the kind of thing that I really love about a game like Disco Elysium. Very good. That was very uh, good. Which is a game that you have finally started playing. I finally started playing. The year is 2019. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really excited to be playing a game called Disco Elysium. It's something I said, you know, whoa, one month ago. And yeah, I was yeah. like, this, this will be a game that I play. I think it was like the beginning of the year mm -hmm. when we were like, what game are you thinking about playing next? And Disco Elysium was on your list. Yeah, that's, that sounds about right. After Dave the Diver. And uh, so I downloaded it. I started playing it. And we're going to do a whole episode. I think we kind of have to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Devoted to it. So I don't want to say too, too much, mm -hmm. but it is unlike anything I've played. Probably. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. And I assumed as much, but general, generally speaking, um, because when I got, when I got into it, mm -hmm. uh, after, the, after the fifth time, I, literally I tried five I times important, to play this game. It's important background. It is because yeah. this game was hard for me to get into harder than any other game I played in my life. I'm surprised I ended up finishing it, to be honest. But once it finally got its hooks into, <laughs> yes, <laughs> Okay, but I'm glad I'm glad that we have this yes. that we have this to, to kind of like push each other forward or I will push you at least. Thank you. When I when it finally got its hooks in me, I remember thinking Andrew would love this game mm -hmm. if he can continue playing it. How much time have you put into it and what are you struggling with most? Um, that's a good question. I've only played a couple hours probably. Yeah. I have died already. Oh yeah, uh, that happens a lot. I didn't know that. Yes. And so I was like, oh shit. And I thought when it went back to the test screen, I'm like, this must be like uh no. And no. I press something and I'm like, no, I really gotta start again. Yeah. You one tip, save more often than you think you have to. Because the first time I died, I lost 45 minutes of progress. I think that was also me. Yeah, that's I died of like an anxiety attack or yes. something like yeah, that. Yeah, trying to like, turn on the lights or something. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, like that. What yeah. the fuck? <laughs> or talking to Kuno, that that bitch little kid. Uh, I was talking to my uh, partner. The detective. Kim Kitsuragi, the best best character in video game history. You'll, it? you'll learn to love him. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. yeah, it's like every time somebody was like, you know, you love Claptrap. I'm like, no, that can't be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, yeah I, I I was somewhere around there and I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Because you're right, you do see the save button come up, but it doesn't come up a lot. Yeah. It comes up every five, 10 minutes or something sure. like that, but a lot happens in between those things. 100%. Um, you know, especially as you plowed through you know, dialogue tree and dialogue tree and dialogue tree and dialogue tree. And then you get to the bottom and you're like, okay, well, I've really explored all my options yes. with this robot or, you know, whatever sure. it's going to be. Right. And Claptrap. Uh, was that Claptrap? Claptrap. That's the robot you're talking. He's Hi. in, he's in Disco Elysium <laughs> voiced by Jack Black. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. He's like probably quirky as all hell. Oh, so quirky. Yeah. Um, he's like Zoe Deschanel. <laughs> Just so quirky. He's so quirky. Yeah. Oh, and we all married to a property brother. Is that true? Yeah. Which one? Do Does it matter? Do well, they trade? Yeah, do you think so? Yeah, I need a week off. Have they played that? Would that be, that would be sexual assault, right? I would imagine so, yeah. But what's the difference? Yeah, the, the, it is funny that the jokes you made is, I'm not trying to make this like an insane, like, uh -huh. <laughs> whatever. But the joke, a joke that I found to be the funniest thing was uh, when people would name sexual positions uh -huh. and they would name something so elaborate that, it, of course, you would never do that, yes. right? But the act of that was very funny to me, probably at the age I was not having sex. Right. <laughs> and so there was- So like, like 32, 33? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah. like about six months ago. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I, it's so weird. I got married and then we're waiting another year after that. We oh. just don't think we were ready. Uh, <laughs> She carried me across and I was like, no, no, not yet. Yeah. Um, was something called the Houdini where mm. you would uh, have sex with somebody uh, so they weren't facing you. And then your friend would tag team in, start having sex with the person. You'd go outside the window and like wave at them. Yes. And he's like, oh my God, that's, what a thing. That's straight up sexual assault. That's rape. That's <laughs> that is full on rape. rape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was the funniest thing and I was wrong. <laughs> I just want to make that incredibly clear. There's so much. Yeah, that was that, that was like the era of like dead baby jokes and stuff like that. Yes. Where the, the, the comedy was in the vulgarity. Yes. And, and we thought no further beyond that because we were uh, uh, deeply privileged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it is. There's no consequences to any of our actions. It was like the aristocrats, but like in the worst version possible. Exactly. 
exactly. So let's let's yeah. Sorry, let's, go back. Disco Elysium. F- f- Disco Elysium, and and uh, uh, let me let me ask you this then, because you said you're struggling with it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, is it the amount of reading? Is it the the mm. pacing? What what is it that you're kind of struggling with a little bit? I'm trying to figure out the balance of should I listen or should I read? Because I mm. almost want to turn off the voice acting if I'm just reading. I, so I I uh, and and I'll which um, is good by the way. The voice acting is good. The voice acting is great. Yeah, I have and, no problem with and that. And the initial release didn't have everything I've voice that, acted, which is kind of crazy it's weird to think about um uh but i've been playing Baldur's gate and Mm -hmm. and i don't want to talk about that just yet but i've noticed that the i'm enjoying the game more when i let the cutscenes play out without reading the block of text and pressing a to go next just enjoying the conversation instead of rushing through it and just reading it so when possible when you're really engaged in a conversation i do recommend listening to it yeah instead of instead of reading i feel like you also pick up on their tone and you almost like la noir a little bit yeah but that's the element the la noir of it all that i thought you would really like Mm -hmm. in this game um it's less about reading facial expressions when you don't know when they're throwing you like a, a MacGuffin or something like that yeah and it's more about uh uh understanding their personality types and using the clues that your own uh skills are giving you because in this game you have one of i think it's like 24 skills that you can do that are are separated into four different subsets like physical conceptual whatever it is yeah and the higher ranked they are as you're having conversations with people you will pass skill checks so if someone lies to you mm-hmm. and you have a high ranking in drama which is the ability to to lie and detect lies mm-hmm. and things like that then your drama skill might say like check succeeded and it'll say like like sir there's something i don't trust about because you're it's like kind of like a a a, a personified your your the drama element of yourself yes. is like i i detect a lie here and then that tells you that informs the next thing that you should say to them. So, um, um, do you do you have a, a an idea of the type of character you're you're building up in this game? I honestly no, I don't know enough to know that yet. I'm still kind of going with the flow a little bit, yeah. and I think I'm playing too conservative. That's the thing I was going to say. I think I need to take more chances yeah. because the other one is uh, a, a part of this game is a tabletop dice yeah. roll game yeah right they call it a crpg instead of a tabletop rpg i think it's like computer role playing game or something like okay. that but it's, it is about dice rolls yeah there's elements game. of i've never played D D. neither have but, i actually but which, yeah. that's crazy it's wild yeah it feels like right down our alley yeah i had friends go the other day and they're like oh we're playing a dd game and we never played before i'm like i never played and they're like really yeah and i'm like okay first of all i didn't like the tone <laughs> that's hurtful uh, but I haven't, and that is surprising to me too. Yeah, it's kind of like when I tell people I can't jungle, uh, jungle, <laughs> jungle. Can't jungle either. Uh, can't torture the jungle. <laughs> I can't swing from vines anymore. <laughs> I'm too old. I can't Shia, Shia LaBeouf in that <laughs> in that uh, uh, Indiana Jones we were to talk about. Um, yeah, is that there's a certain element to that. So I've never played D anD D, but yeah. there's a certain element of like, do you want to roll the die and take a chance? Sure. And it shows you a percentage chance. As a gambler, I really like that. Yes. But I am weirdly playing very conservative. Like, no, it's not over fifty percent. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, who knows? Like, you well, know? There, the so there's there's two checks. There's a red check, which you can only try once in the game, and a white check, where if you fail it, you can try it later, as long as you put <laughs> stats into that. Uh, so if it's like volition, which is a stat that you can you can uh, increase, if if you if it's a high volition check and you have like two volition and you fail it, if you put one of your stat points into volition, you can go back and try that again. Right. So it's worth taking some risks for two reasons. One, you might be able to access it again, and two, sometimes that opens up better. Yes dialogue failing options. might it, it opens up a different yes uh opportunity that you wouldn't have done by just letting it pass you're not really getting either yes. and i think that's you know i uh, the problem is it's like once i died then i was like oh jesus christ i need yeah. to play super conservative it's like yeah. no that's probably not it no i just need to be paying better attention i think the other one too is it's a nice reset for me and i think some other gamers out there uh but you know you can play some games and they're not the best right yeah. let's say listen they're not let's say they're not the best written sure oh, and so yeah, you yeah, get yeah. out of gameplay and it's like but i and it's a cutscene you're like a a a a like 100%. i don't care let's just go and this is a nice check to go like oh no no wait stop stop pressing the button read it, take your time it is very well written and very well acted and the drama of it all i think is is you have to let it wash over you because if you're just like playing it to beat it and you're like okay next next like it really is about the subtleties of what people people are saying and i completely understand why some people don't have the patience for it because for four times out of the five that I tried to play it, I didn't have the patience mm-hmm. for it. But I'd say stick with it. Uh, uh, maybe give us some updates as you go. But sure, we should definitely schedule a a a time to 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 play that game. And off the podcast, I almost want to like upload all of the things that were that I was stuck on to you. Oh yeah, so that you know, like, hey, this is what I this is what I didn't understand about the game. And once I figured it out, it really started to flow. 
So I'll add some of those to it. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. And so just at home, you know, you got a couple of weeks, go play Disco Elysium. It only yeah. takes so many hours. So, you know, maybe you could be finishing the game as we're going to be talking about it uh, soon. Yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah. Definitely worth doing. Uh, take it from me, the guy who really struggled to, to, to beat it for, for so many times. But it's funny that you have these games where you struggle with it. Yeah. And then it, you end up loving it after struggling with it. Death Stranding. Death Stranding. You know, Disco Elysium. Man. I think it's the kind of thing. It, it, it Some games are... I know that it's art and I know that it's well received and people whose opinions I respect really hold it to a high standard. And if it's not mechanics based and it's about like the story, I'm like, okay, I know if I push through, I'm really going to like it. And man, I haven't stopped thinking about Disco Elysium since mm. I've beaten it. Even to the point where I'm like, I think back to even the last few hours of playing and I'm like, this is good. I'm enjoying this, but it was never like, this is one of my favorite games. And mm -hmm. now that I'm on the other side of it, I'm like, I think that was one of my favorite games. Like it is, it's very, very interesting. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 So no, yeah, uh, that's really exciting. So yeah, can't wait to play more of it. And, uh, and uh, after I beat it, I realized that I kind of developed the vocabulary for CRPGs and, and role playing and dice rolls and all that okay. stuff. So I, as I mentioned, have started playing again, Baldur's Gate three. Um, <gasps> wow. And I'm, it is, it's working on me. I'm about 11 hours in. I started new campaign because uh, um, I, I I originally started playing as a fighter and I thought that like what I would enjoy from the game isn't the combat it's the role playing element of it so I played it as a bard like high charisma high performance capabilities I want to be able to lie I want to be able to to get my way through situations without fighting and instead of just like speaking and that's been a lot of fun and I, I I'm 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 not sure if I'll be able to dump the 100 hours or so that's required to beat the game but I do find that the more I play it the more I want to play it so mm. it's very possible that I, I it will consume me in this wow. way especially because it's like really horny yeah it's a really horny game is it matching your level of horniness Mm. like it's horny you're horny we're all horny i have i mean we have slept together the game and me oh, really <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Did you yeah, fall yeah. asleep at the computer again i did i did fall asleep at the computer <laughs> yeah, yes yeah. yes uh, uh that hard drive slot uh that free hard drive <laughs> slot is not as inviting as as uh, i once imagined it might be yeah uh, -huh. uh no but i i will keep people updated on that as well i think being 10 hours in and with so much discourse out there about uh, Baldur's Gate. I don't really want to start giving my opinions on it too much because it's it's not fully formed just yeah, yet. But yeah. this is just to say, heads up, listener. I've been playing <laughs> and I've been enjoying. It's it's a, a real beast, though. You know, like, oh my god, yeah. It takes a long time for you to finish. It it takes a long time for me to finish, but I've been finishing, Andrew. Yeah, finishing you have. You, you're definitely you. I don't think it is fair to say you don't finish anymore. Yeah, and I also don't think you play Baldur's Gate, and it's like. Uh, you didn't finish. It's like, well, okay. I, I put, there, there are certain games where even like, like, uh, 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 like Middle Earth Shadows of Mordor, like sure. that game is a game I consider that, that I, I played and beat, even though I, I didn't really mm. play past the second act, but I put so many hours into it that I'm like, I get it. Yeah, I, I did it. Right, I did it. Right. There are those games where you put so many hours into it that you're like, I may as well have beaten it. It's all yeah. the same. The I'll Gollum game. Oh, know. that's, I mean, no, that's worth beating and playing over and over again. Yeah, yeah. That's what you want to spend your time doing. <laughs> Fucking hell. So, so many people spent so much of their life working on that game. Isn't that, it's, the, the problem is, is like the more, in, the more attuned to those facts of life that you get, the mm -hmm. harder it is to live because I'm like, I want to make fun of that game. But if I worked on that game, I would Crushing. be so sad. I know it's, I, I, we were talking about this the other day with like, can you imagine being the Foley artist? Uh, like a really good Foley artist, right? You're making a little sound You're effects. talking about like the the one of the best members of Kids in the Hall? Yeah, Scott Foley. Yeah, 100%. Scott Foley. What's his name? Dave Foley. Dave Foley. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, I guess we'll just change the subject. I guess so. Just, I don't know. Can you imagine being the best Foley artist? You're making sound effects and everything. And uh, you're like, I'm so good at it. And then you go to the premiere and you watch Madam Web and you're like, oh man, fucking 100%, hell. 100%. 100%. God damn it. This is so good. No one's going to, no one is going to notice the Foley no, work because no. they're just so worried about to go to Johnson. Yeah, that's a great point. Like there are people who do good work and sometimes it's just not as good as the sum of its parts, I think. Yeah, that's everyone, fair. everyone involved is talented, but the vision isn't quite there for no one's fault in particular, potentially. Um, yeah, that, that's got to, that's got to be heartbreaking. Yeah. It's years of your life. It is. It's years of your life. Yeah. You know, that's tough. Um, I've spent many years of my life, Andrew, uh -oh. playing uh, playing with uh, accessories in video games. <laughs> <laughs> I wasted my I, I dice rolled improv and I missed I, it, was, it was a 63 percent and I missed. Um, uh, but I've been playing with video game accessories. Yes, you Today, have. we are going to do a <laughs> tier ranking of uh, some of the most iconic video game peripherals of all time. Now, so, yeah. we put it out there to our listeners mm -hmm. to recommend some of their favorite ones, point out some of the ones that maybe we'd never heard of. And boy, oh boy, there are a lot of them out there. Yeah. Good, bad, and in between. 
So we took a lot of people's suggestions. Yeah. And we tried to use ones that were popular. Yes. Because we might do ones later of extreme and unique ones. That's that's right. So these ones are ones that we thought were most popular or suggestions made by you, the listener uh -huh. uh, or viewer over at YouTube. Uh, Stop looking at me. Stop. You can't, you can't stop. Stop fucking looking at me. I can't. They just, the camera loves you. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Thank you. I need to hear that. Somebody <laughs> loves me. Somebody, the, camera. the camera. An inanimate object. Another robot. <laughs> <laughs> I feel your pain. Um. So, yeah. So, we're going to do these. And if you don't know what a tier list is, we are going to have... What did we do last time? D was the last one? Uh, We did S to F, I think, actually. Oh, we did do F. Uh, okay. Uh, we did. And I think this one... Sorry. We did S, A, B, C, and F. So, F oh, takes we, the place of D. Right. We took out D. So, we but S, D. obviously, is the best. Yes. And it goes down from there. And we try and... We try and even it out a little bit. We do. I think we have to kind of rate them on a bell curve so where nice. we try to have them most heavily slotted towards the middle and then equal on either sides of good and bad. Yes. Uh, and as you mentioned, there are some more, uh, some lesser known ones that sure. we may spend an episode of itself going back mm -hmm. and doing a deep dive on some of the more uh, interesting peripherals that we've come across. Very interesting. But in the, in the interim, I don't even know. Let's not go over the full list that we're going to do. Let's just bring them up as they go. I would I love to. And uh, and it'll surprise the listener or the viewer. Stop looking at me. <laughs> stop. If this becomes a recurring bit where once an episode just out of nowhere, you go, stop looking at me. <laughs> I was, Everyone's going to start questioning, like, how's Mikey doing? Is he okay? I think they already started questioning <laughs> me on that. Yeah. It's kind of, they're all Django doll and we're the chimps or something like that. You know what I mean? They're all Django doll? They're all Django doll, yes. They're what Jane you? Goodall. Oh, Jane <laughs> They're all Django doll. Like, dude, I have Dr. Django doll. Dr. Django doll. <laughs> and we're the apes. And I'm Coco because I've learned the ability to talk. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't that be amazing if it's like Coco does sign language and then just goes, so what are we talking about? <laughs> You're like, whoa, <laughs> why do you teach you sign language at all? It's like, oh, he's, Coco's finally speaking. It's make America. Good. No, 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 What are oh, we doing? Crap. What are we doing? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Just a side thing. Yeah. Do you know, like at zoos and stuff, a big thing is they tell uh, humans to stop showing apes their phone. Have you not heard this? So this is like a thing, even at the Toronto Zoo. So we have a pretty big zoo uh, in terms of North America uh -huh. and there's signs going, don't show the apes their phones <laughs> because they are fascinated by them and you're like if you've never wanted a clear distinction that we clearly evolved from apes they're like whoa can i touch that for a while and you're like no no that's bad for you man you're watching the apes just like like imitating the tiktok dance, yeah yeah like, yeah <laughs> see i get it we gotta ban it oh my god uh i also love yeah there is that whole conversation about the tiktok ban and it sure. isn't a tiktok ban it's it's making it under u.s control <laughs> that's that's what they, that's what they want yeah, yeah. we don't yeah. like that it's another country doing it and clearly spying on us yeah, yeah, i know yeah, yeah. i know there is like a legitimate argument where they're like i uh, I don't know. It's, it's influencing young people or something like that, impossibly yeah. or negatively. Yeah. It is also a complete spyware from another country. 100%. <laughs> so, but here's the thing Instagram is complete spyware from our own country. And we feel much better <laughs> about that. <laughs> and we love it. Uh, uh, yeah, this is this is the most extreme show me a picture of you when you were 20 okay and what's your grandparents last name <laughs> yeah, okay. exactly and show us now <laughs> okay good got it uh, now good, thank good, you good 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 that is like that is my one form of rebellion i'm like i will not i refuse to do the like, uh, th you know, show me what you look like yes. younger or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, I, I, same with me, but that's because I hated how I looked when I was that age. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go through it, yeah. Andrew. Uh, we're going to start off with, uh, with a peripheral that I think most of us have some experience with, either now in the form of, it's kind of built into everything that we use or right. as a, as when we were younger, we did have to buy it to get the functionality that now comes standard. It's the N64 rumble pack. Oh, what a great start. Isn't it a great start? That's a great start. I, it, it's, it's an accessory to peripheral that I absolutely loved. Yes. Um, question. Did you like or dislike the weight that it added to an N64 controller? Uh, I, the, uh, the result is kind of what I'm going to say is like, I played with the rumble pack so much. That if I ever took it off, I was like, what the fuck? Like it had, it had skewed what my expectation of what an N64 controller is yeah. that I have. It's weird not having one. I, I hear you. Yeah, it's it did become this thing where you just had to get used to this added like 17 pounds of weight that you were carrying around. Yeah. Like if you if you took it out, like you said, it, you'd like hit yourself in the face yeah, like yeah. Dwight from the <laughs> when, when Jim's putting nickels in his phone. Yeah. Um. Uh. But I actually liked the weight. And, and to this day, I like a heavier, chunkier controller. I just feel like it's more substantial. Yeah. And I think as a kid, maybe I didn't like it so much, but I, I also don't know. I don't recall as a kid being like, this is making my controller too heavy. I was just like, this is so fucking cool. My controller's moving. I'm going to put it on my genitals. 
I, I was wondering how long it would take before we started talking about that. It was, how long did it take before you tried it? It was as soon as my, I unwrapped it <laughs> for Christmas, my parents left the house and then that controller went in my pants. <laughs> I just, I, I wave race 64 against a, a wall, a wall. I just shoved it in my pants <laughs> and that worked because there's something about crashing jet skis that really gets my motor running. <laughs> it's like the David Cronenberg crash movie. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Car accidents. Um, yeah, I, that obviously is a huge perk. Yes. There's no denying that yes. S tier. No, I, 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 what was the game you got it for? Do you oh, remember that? That's a good, you know what? I think it may have been, uh, I think it was bundled in with Star Fox. And I think remember that's, that. I think yeah. that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I built, I, I went a step further talking about gaming peripherals. I had a homemade gaming peripheral, which was a giant cardboard box that I drew like a control panel in on the inside and cut out a screen so I could play with the rumble pack and sit in there. And it felt like I was in a cockpit. Whoa, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah. And kids just, kids just have VR headsets these days. Go fuck yourself. Lazy. Go fuck it. Stop looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just amazing. I saw uh, an Apple pro Vision, what are they called? Vision Pro. Vision Pro? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. close. Okay. Uh, I saw one in the wild. Oh. I saw someone just having one, using it. And really? I And I was like, uh, it was, yeah, it was at a bar. And I saw someone using it and I went, whoa, look at that. And I can't get over how stupid you look. You look real dumb. Like, it's not, e it's not even the actual peripheral itself. This is not coming up later, so I'm not spoiling anything. Yeah. It's the pinching. Oh, the pinching. yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah, like, yeah, just yeah. like this. And I'm like, oh boy. You know what? It's going to take a lot getting used to because I also, when I saw the first person with, um, with uh, AirPods, oh, and you look straight on at them. I was like, "No way, we're going to wear this." Now it's like maybe the most essential piece of a technology I have. So well, like, it it becomes that, oh. and I think it'll. It's just a matter of paring down the shape of the technology, yeah. and also getting used to seeing it. Yep, where it will become something that you almost need. Yes, you yes, know, in, in the know. same way where it's like you're driving, and it, it'll be. I think it'll end up being a thing where where projected interfaces like that whether you have the glasses on or not like mm -hmm. the windshield of your car will be the map or something like that yeah. where it's like that's just going to become very very standard yeah. until it is implanted into our heads and then we get a mind virus of some sort <laughs> not that mind virus no not that one dr fauci um <laughs> you know or we're the we're all the sick monkey that elon Musk put the chip <laughs> into <laughs> still my favorite story we were all the sick monkey <laughs> it's okay they were sick oh good <laughs> He would have, have you seen how much they love phones? Chimps love technology. <laughs> yeah. They love technology. Django dolls, you know? <laughs> Django dolls. <laughs> Come on, Dr. Django doll. That was my action <laughs> figure based on the sixth Quentin Tarantino movie. <laughs> Did you get a Christoph Waltz? No, I got a Django doll. I got a, Django doll. <laughs> I got a bleeding Leo. <laughs> Everyone's favorite story. Everyone's favorite story. He it's, finished the scene. He finished the scene. It's just like every time that uh, Viggo Mortensen is like, you know, he broke his toe in that scene. Yeah, Lord of the exactly. Rings. Yeah, every time. It's like, like, yeah, I've seen a lot of shifts where someone gets like, like a, like a nail in their hand and yeah. they finish their whole work. It's not 30 more seconds. They finish the day. Yeah. Yeah. That's brutal. I love it. Um, uh, so so rumble rumble back. Back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I don't want to start too early here, yeah. but I think this goes a, I agree. I agree that it goes a, I think at the time it was essential. It was, it was something that was, that, that was unlike anything that we were playing, but it's become so synonymous to to the point where it doesn't even need a peripheral that no. it can't quite be S tier, I don't think. But at the same time, cre created a standard that all controllers needed to keep, yes. which does mean something. You know there what I mean? There is something to be said though. There was a company that owned the technology, like the Rumble technology, that- uh, that, <laughs> that just sounds cool. The Rumble technology. <laughs> have, we have Rumble technology. It sounds like WWF. Mm -hmm. They yeah. did have Rumble technology. Rumble it was technology. royal. It was royal. <laughs> um, um, and I think pretty much every video game company had to settle out of court with this company that owned the patent that they essentially oh. ripped off and uh, and maybe because of that the rumble pack isn't as isn't an s because it was stolen technology that's interesting you know what we do adjust it as we go yes. so i think a is a great place to start and we can go from there i agree okay so that's rumble pack in a all right uh we'll move to the the next one this one is, okay. is a lot more niche and it was recommended by uh, our friend of the show riley little oh. he's been on the podcast before yes. uh um a couple times actually uh, he he and he, that's it he threw, and, and he and never never again. wants to come back <laughs> he wants to, he actually sent us a couple recommendations some of which we might get to in another episode but this one was niche enough 
that it's interesting, but popular enough that I think most people have seen what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Came with the GameCube uh, copy of Resident Evil 4, I think if you pre-ordered or got the special edition, it's the chainsaw controller for Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube. Okay, so I was unaware of this, but when Riley, uh, I think he tweeted at you, X'd X'd you. He X'd me. Yeah, X'd me hard. (laughs) He ghosted me. Is X'd, is a reply? That's the way you say it? It has to be. Okay. What else would it be? Uh, Anything. (laughs) I don't replied. know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You replied to it with pictures of yes. these things that he was mentioning. Yeah. And I'd never seen it before. And a picture of his genitals. I know, right? I don't want to say it, but mm-hmm. gen- genitals. Genitals. His genitals. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, yeah. I'm like, now that's a peripheral. So that's coming up, what, number six or seven? That's R- Riley's genitals. Riley's genitals. Um, yeah. S tier, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. S tier. Or D for dick. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have D. We're creating it for him. I'm just kidding. It's C for cock. <laughs> He didn't send me a B for balls pick, though. I know, that was weird. Shaft. So I guess we're just going to have to put a B for bazongas. Bazongas. <laughs> um, okay, so this one, it was for Resident Evil, he said. Yes. How did you use it? Uh, you. Or so can you describe it also, too? Yeah, just it's, people it's seen basically it? like a, a a small, I think to scale relative to a real chainsaw. I don't know for sure. Oh, I haven't okay. used many of them. Um, we're, we're, sorry, when you said small, but relatively to scale, I'm like, stop talking about Riley's generals. <laughs> Come relatively, on. relatively to scale. Yeah, um, uh, and it had it it had the buttons of a GameCube controller, kind of like just like a Picasso, just thrown <laughs> at the, thrown at the at the at the base of the chainsaw, and you play it. It was it was weighted very strangely. Mm. It was bloody, like the chainsaw that the guy with the the bag over his head wears. Yeah, um, um, it feels like an Evil Dead thing. More it honestly, does, when it, I saw it, I was like, hmm. yeah. It's I mean, I think it became pretty iconic because the the chainsaw wielding bad guy in resident evil 4 became an iconic part of the of the the demo that they would show so the chainsaw itself was what was used yeah it was very cool very niche the kind of thing that i think you get not to use but to have yeah i would put on a shelf yeah if you're out there and you actually played resident evil 4 with the chainsaw controller please let us know uh how your carpal tunnel syndrome is doing (laughs) i did because this feels like one of those ones was like it was so cool i was so excited i unboxed it I used it about for 45 minutes. I switched back to normal controller. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Um, um, but they probably had a better time than I did when I first played Resident Evil 4 because as I've said before, I used one of like the Mad Cats versions, yes. GameCube controllers that I didn't know was broken where the camera button was skewed way to the right even though I wasn't moving it. So I was like, this view fucking sucks. <laughs> what a this, choice. <laughs> this game is impossible, dude. <laughs> it can't even see the people in front of me. Yeah. Um, so the, the chainsaw controller, I've never used it. I don't think you've ever used it. No, um, no. But, but I've seen it. I think I have enough of an uh an understanding of it to place it low i think it's gonna be a c i think i think it'll be c because i do appreciate the novelty of yes, it but from, exactly a, from it. a practical standpoint it's just not there looks cool cool idea doesn't work that well c now you're talking about my dick <laughs> <laughs> wow look at that oh that's too bad i mean it looks good it looks good it looks definitely a penis it is <laughs> it's definitely a penis uh, okay, the next oh. one we're going to move to is the Game Boy Camera. Oh, yeah. Now, this was Nintendo being weird Nintendo, which yeah. is something that I do like. They took a lot of big swings on on peripherals throughout the existence of their of their uh, uh, reign as kings and queens of the video game community, potentially. Mm-hmm. You're saying that like you're trying not to offend somebody. What, what is this? Well, no, it's just I, I think I think you would offend more than not having said queens as well as kings. Mm. I think I would have offended playstation and xbox fanboys who called nintendo the royalty of the video game community which i think they are i would say so they have a long reign exactly a long reign uh but the game boy camera was an interesting effect i the the kind of thing where it was terrible quality terrible but relative to the time was kind of neat it was it was like look this is you know before we had phones and 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 really we had webcams digital cameras as well where we're we're not used to being able to see ourselves reflected in a screen no immediately uh was very very cool very cool and it it was kind of i guess at the time when like v tech would make their like quote unquote cell phones for Mm -hmm. kids like Mm -hmm. everything was trying to be like an adult uh uh, piece of technology but but marketed towards kids and this was kind of that but it didn't feel pedantic in a Mm. way that felt like they were pandering to us i really liked the game boy camera although i never really used it yeah yeah i used it I, I remember liking it because it's the same thing. It's like, it's just so cool that you could see yourself in the 12 pixels yes. it had, but like, you know, whatever. And then paired with something that we have later, it felt like the coolest, you know, combination. Well, why don't we do them together okay. then, actually? 
Okay. Uh, because Riley also recommended we we take a look at the the Game Boy printer. Um, and I know they're different things, but why don't we loop them into the same? I'm the same okay with thing? that because you did use them kind of together. You did, and and the only other time you'd use the camera was like I think it was for some built-in games where you would take a picture of yourself and you would be the character on screen, which is basically a stick figure with your black Terrifying. and white pixelated just face on Rorschach it. Rorschach style. Yes. Like, yeah, just very scary. I will say there's this, uh, there's a guy on TikTok that brings his Game Boy camera to famous places and takes pictures. Oh, that's cool. Of them. And it's like, you know, if you didn't tell me that's what it was, I yeah. would have no idea. What yeah, it yeah, is. yeah, yeah. But I think it's just such an interesting use of technology, especially that we are very in love with retro technology and analog technology yeah. and like printer uh, cameras that are on film and sure. like all this kind of stuff. I think it's a very cool idea. Uh, the problem is with going to be rating these ones. Yes. Is it was cool at the time. It was revolutionary at the time. Yeah. Now it's almost inconsequential. Yes. Where do we put it because of that? See, I think it can't. I, I think it's lower than B because it was cool at the time. But but again, from a practical standpoint, it wasn't very usable. The mm. games like I don't think anyone who had it really used it that much, especially right. the Game Boy printer was really expensive to use. Um, um, nowadays, if you use it, it's it's a. Uh, it's almost like like flexing by by saying that you have a virtual boy or something like that. Yes. Where, where you're 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 saying this piece of technology that wasn't great. Look at how I'm using it in the modern day. Isn't that funny and nifty? But it's not good. No, I, I would agree with you. And I think you you brought up, I think, what is the biggest selling point here or the, the biggest point that it will be judged by uh -huh. is it wasn't really used for games. Right. You right. know what I mean? Like it was used as like a novelty going like, isn't this cool? Yes. And then you'd be like, yes. And then and that would be what? the end of the conversation. Right. You know right. what I mean? So I think I am okay with also dropping it pretty low because it just didn't have a lot of practical uses even at the time. Yeah. I think it was ahead of its time, but not very usable. I'm good with C if you're good with C. I'm good with C for now. For now. Yes. It may, it, it if, it, maybe, if it drops to, yeah. And yeah. Because we might have more like really core C stuff. But yes. We'll see. Now we wanted to, this is an interesting one because Rock Band and oh, Guitar Hero yeah. have a ton of accessories and we considered doing them both as uh, e either as the package for all of them yeah. or the most iconic ones, which is almost inarguably the, the, guitar, the guitar and the drum kit. Yes. We decided to separate them out between guitar and drum kit as two different ones, but we did, as we're ranking them, want to give our opinions on which, if any, we preferred between Guitar Hero and Rock Band. For me, if we're looking at the drum kit, I only ever really wanted to play with the rock band version. I don't know if you had a preference or if, if, if no. between the two of them. Uh, rock band drum kit, I think, is the the premier one. Yeah. And then if you're going to go the opposite, Guitar Hero. I agree 100%. I, yeah. Anytime that, because you could use the Guitar Hero uh, guitar alongside or within rock band and, and vice versa. If I ever got stuck with the rock band guitar... Yeah. And you weren't playing bass because that was the the only way you could kind of like make it work. There was something about the the lack of clickiness to the mm -hmm. to the 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 string, the I don't know the, the, the string, paddle whatever, thing, whatever yeah, it yeah, is yeah. that uh, that the guitar hero thing had that was very. You could almost link up the sensation of the click with the scroll of the of the the icons to make sure you're hitting the notes on the guitar hero one that I really liked. So I'm go. I'm, I agree with you. Guitar hero for the guitar yeah. and rock band for the drum kit. Okay, so if we're gonna set that as the bass level. Yes. Do you want to do the drum kit first? Let's do the drum kit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm curious to get your thoughts on this one. It, I don't know. It was good. Uh, I was I was much more of a guitar hero person Same. than a rock band person. I just thought it was better song choices. It was also first to market. Yep. So like I had much more uh, affiliation with it. Yep. Like, you know, that was the one I was used to using. And the drum kit was great. And I can't begin to, to express, it's, it's about use and about uh -huh. playing it. Yes. But then it's also about this weird corner of the room it would take out <laughs> when it's like not in use and it's just yeah. like there and you're like, yeah. and it was like cheap plastic and yeah. stuff. It just didn't feel very good. Yes. Yes. Like when you have multiple, this is the other problem with rock bands in general is that you play, play with multiple people. Yeah. Felt like you felt like Leonard Skinner. You were oh, 100%. so good. Yes. But then you're playing alone. Like, and you're like, you could hear the plastic hitting and you're it like, it sounds like, your tears dropping on that your your lonely tears dropping on the sidewalk or something like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You almost need to play with earphones or something like that. Yeah, yeah. You can't hear the clicking. Yeah. I I thought that was a sadder experience. Whereas playing alone with a guitar, which was most of my experience yes, with it, same. felt awesome. I agree with you. What yeah. a strange distinction, but so true. Oh, that's good. I'm glad and, you agree. And here's here's something that I'll that I'll also say because we're gonna tier rank these ones together. We may as well, just like we did. Not not in the same tier, yeah. but 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 at the same time. My problem with the drum kit is everyone said they're like, this is the best translation of 
real draw like real instrument to gaming yeah relative to the guitar which isn't really playing guitar it's no. playing video game guitar the problem with that is as cool as it is to sit down and feel like i am kind of playing the drums i've mm -hmm. got the drum mm -hmm. kit i've got the the bass pedal and when you're playing on expert it's pretty much like you need to be an expert drum player yeah in order to to, to beat that yeah. which some people feel cool i disliked that mm. because the reason i play video games is to be good at something that i'm not yeah. i don't want to play nba 2k and it's like well shoot a couple three pointers now and then we'll tell you how good your character is in the game i'm like no i want to be good at the game that's why i'm playing it or if it's like playing a 2k and it's like isn't it just like shooting three pointers and you're like okay if we're getting that close i am just gonna go play basketball <laughs> it's exactly you know like exactly. it's if, if it's so good then i will just get a drum kit that's it that's a great point you know and and i found guitar was a great translation of gaming to music to feeling like you were contributing to the overall effect without actually having to learn how to play guitar i feel like if i got expert on drums i would actually end up being an expert drum player yeah. and I, that well, wasn't what I was in it for. So I think in general, the drum kit is lower than, I the, agree than the guitar. And then it's a matter of where it is. But I don't think like when we're talking about low, I don't, I, I honestly think the guitar has a chance to be an S. I, I think the guitar should be an S. Okay. Well then there we go. Okay. And then the other one, and then the drum kit's a B. I, oh, so B instead of A. Yeah. No, you want to do A? No, you know what? We don't have any in B yet. Okay. And I, I agree with that. Let's Okay. Because let's, let's I think that there route. is a two category distinction between the two of them. I that that's that's a good point. I can see it moving up to A if we need it. Yes. We have to round them all out. Yeah. But I agree that the guitar is or I I, I, f I fundamentally believe the guitar is S tier because it, you know, unlike maybe we're not doing the Wiimote on this because that feels like an actual part of a console. But it's not like, a peripheral. It's yeah. Like a yeah. Core. <laughs> but the way that a Wii kind of saturated houses, even if they didn't have anything to do with games, so too did the guitar. It was a system seller and a video game seller to yeah. those who didn't like video games. So S tier for me. And I, I, I kind of struggle seeing it moving out of that area. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it also like, you know, it's uh, what are they, what do they call it? Like when you smoke weed, it's a gateway drug. Oh yeah. Uh, and the Aerosmith, I just told the thing, but is guitar hero was a gateway drug to Aerosmith. <laughs> <laughs> See, to me, Aerosmith was a gateway to guitar gateway to guitar hero. Oh yeah. Cause I was like, I can play this fucking awesome music. Is on this Joe game. Perry simulator? <laughs> like it's called guitar hero. And you're like, uh, yeah, that's what I meant. Sure. Dude. Whatever <laughs> yeah. you say for me, it was Steven Tyler simulator. Oh, famous, actually Tyler, famous non guitar player, <laughs> Tyler Perry simulator. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Medea. <laughs> uh, okay. So this one is one that, uh, was, <laughs> Sorry, I just love laughing like, oh, Medea. That's the only thing I know about Tyler Perry. I'm like, moving on. Also, Gone Girl. Uh, based on novel Pushed by Sapphire, wasn't it? Wasn't that also Tyler Perry? Did he direct that? I thought he did. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't know that. Maybe. Sure. maybe. Entirely so. possible. Could be wrong. He was in Gone Girl as an attorney and he played. Yes. He was very good in that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, this guy's a director? Yeah. He, and he also is a billionaire. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah he has yeah. made so because he self funds all his own movies. It's unbelievable. I remember you and I used to do this like fantasy league that was based on box office. I so badly want to do it again, but just kind of you can't do it anymore. Oh, no. Well, just, it's tough. It's tough to say with Netflix and streaming and stuff and like that. But yeah, yeah, it was a fantasy league where you had a budget and we would all bid on movies and whoever had you would have a collection of movies and whoever made the most money. Yeah. One. And one of your first picks was a Tyler Perry movie yeah. because <laughs> it costs so little yes. to pick it up and the guarantee upside was so high yeah. and that one just dominated swept the floor uh, i still kind of want to do that again i would love to do that yeah, so that sounds fun. great yeah uh so this this next one is one that i added to the list mm -hmm. something that i i actually bought and played a lot of whether it was good or bad remains to be seen we'll find but out. it's the donkey konga bongos <laughs> which is just very fun to say that's a good name say it donkey kong Ga yeah bongos say it donkey again donkey konga bongos say it again donkey konga bongos say it again donkey konga bongos never say it again if it's, it's like if the first time i ever saw breasts i'm like donkey konga bongos <laughs> <laughs> holy smokes <laughs> are you like were you wearing a fedora the first time you saw breasts smoking a cigar you're like donkey konga bongos those things are big um so what the hell are these <laughs> so donkey konga bongos are sold <laughs> It's fun. It, they were bundled into the game Donkey Konga, which was a, a music rhythm game that Nintendo put out Donkey Kong themed with bongos instead of a guitar. Okay. So you could do, there were basically four inputs, bang the left bongo, bang the right bongo, clap, bang both bongos at the same time. Okay. That was it. That's it. And you could play. So the, this game was very good, right? 
It was fun. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> You're, that. The, the, the height of your voice is, is showing a lot. If I told you that the impression that I get by the Mighty Mighty Boston's mm -hmm. was a song that you could play on the bongos. Did you have the one guy that just dances? Yeah, yeah, that was that had to be in the background. You you set up your uh, your like like GameCube camera, your Game Boy camera. Yeah, yeah. I would watch <laughs> someone in the background <laughs> dancing, and if they weren't, you'd fail immediately. Good job on the bongos. Bad job on the dancing. <laughs> See, uh, yeah. There was also, I think it was there was a Donkey Kong game. I don't think it was Tropical Freeze, but it may have been Tropical Freeze okay. uh, uh, or Donkey Kong Rush or something like that. There was a Donkey Kong game that you could play with the bongos, and it was actually pretty well received the weird thing about these accessories is that this accessory is it, it kind of came and went and a lot of people never even knew it happened it was weirdly well reviewed though oh yeah um uh but unfortunately i think the staying power and the, the market saturation is a big detriment to these things sure and the fact that i don't even know where they are like a lot of accessories you get and you're like i'm not throwing those away because that was like pretty cool to have yeah i think i threw them away if you want to see what these things look like, check out Mikey's Twitter. I respect yeah. Mikey because he posted about it when asking for uh, replies or for ideas for this. Yeah. They look cool. They do. They do look cool. They like do. they're they're bongos. Yes, and they're like they're Donkey, Donkey Kong, Kong colored. Bongos. Yeah, they're Donkey yeah. Kong bongos. Yeah. <laughs> so if you haven't, say that at just wherever you are. Just say that out loud. Yeah, it's so much fun. You will thank us. Yeah. So this one, I, I trust you on this one. What do you want to do? I think I'm going to put it in the B because it was functional. It worked, but the staying power just really wasn't there. Wow. And uh, again, I think we have to we have to start uh, pumping some into the B range. Yeah. Because B, that's B for bongos. B for bongos. Yeah. Donkey Kong bongos. <laughs> And there's no D, so there's no D. And you know what? I'm uh, there's also nothing in speaking of no D, there's nothing in our F so wow. far, except for potentially our next one, okay. which was recommended to us by longtime listener Aaron Omar, friend of the show. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Tony Hawk Pro Skater Ride Skateboard. Yeah. When we did Tony Hawk recently, uh -huh. you one of the things that blew my mind was you mentioned how many Tony Hawk games there were. There were too many. That is the number. It was too many. Yeah. And I. Uh, because everyone stopped playing Tony Hawk around around the same around time. The same you time. Know, based on sales. It, it was, seems it like was roughly around the time um, they got to be dog shit. Right, right. It right. was like generally speaking, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. It was the year dog shit. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. You're like playing it and you're like, man, I really love Tony Hawk. This is dog shit. Yeah, that see, I remember thinking yeah. that where I'm like We all did that together. Skateboarding is fun. So much so much fun. Doing tricks is fun. This is dog shit. Now. Right. <laughs> That was a weird feeling that I had. So we all just kind of collectively gave up as a nation. Yes. <laughs> yeah. and one nation. One underdog. nation. <laughs> one nation under dog shit. Uh, and we, so it kept going whether we wanted it to or not. Right. And right. one of these things that part, came with it was part of the we, right? I, I think so. It was, yeah. it was, it was around the time of we market saturation where we thought and, and guitar hero was like peripherals. Yeah. Everything's got to have a peripheral. Everything has to be a peripheral. And you know, I will say in the, theoretical sense when you're coming up with ideas of like what could we sell in addition to a video game what's something someone could do at home and feel like they're really doing it a skateboard makes a lot of sense skateboard it is, doesn't yeah. take up a huge amount of space you could stand on it at home <laughs> that's a big selling point i would say so you can stand on it at home <laughs> it's like your carpet it said that on the box. It's, it's like, like your, your carpet. carpet yeah that was so weird and then the weird was the subtitle mm. under it that said and it matches the drapes? Yeah. Like, how do you know? How do you know that? I mean, what does that mean? Every one of them is black. <laughs> what does that have to do with it? That's so weird. What is this, a Tyler Perry movie? <laughs> <laughs> um, I meant black hair, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah is, and so, is, to my knowledge, it was a, <laughs> are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was a flat board. No wheels. No, no brackets. No, no. <laughs> Andrew would be devastating but well wheels. you know what i'm describing a skateboard, a skateboard. <laughs> an actual skateboard yeah 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 yeah. and and so you would be able to do tricks and stuff with it and um this was also i i just don't know if we stress this enough this was a time of dog shit it's, this was this was beyond dog shit this was like we've stepped on the dog shit a few times right dog shit is a couple days old yes yeah uh, and so it didn't do very well. It wasn't no. the rejuvenation that they thought it would all be for uh, the Tony Hawk franchise. Yeah. And was kind of renounced roundly. Yeah. And it was uh, uh, unlike the, just like the wheels that it didn't have. 
it, the wheels came off or what? Roundly, you said. Oh, roundly. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the the uh, this was this was the I think the first Tony Hawk game that wasn't never soft. They took a big swing. It clearly didn't work. It, they had to focus more on like a downhill element because you couldn't really do the tricks on it. Right. Much. Like, how are you going to do a, you know, a, a stale fish or something on? on yeah, like stale fish. Yeah, stale fish. Yeah, smells yeah. almost as bad as the dog shit that the franchise turned into. <laughs> so this was uh-huh. wildly, widely panned yes. and often thought of as what I propose putting it in is the F tier. I would, I would, yeah, I would agree with you. Were think, you were you thinking higher? No, like I, I'm trying to come up with an argument because yeah. we're doing a podcast, yeah. and I thought, you know, like, well, you know, no, this is pretty bad. A peripheral that led or or contributed to the downfall of one of my favorite franchises, and I had to pay more in order to experience more dog shit. Yeah, I think I'm putting that in in F. We're gonna have to readdress the Donkey Konga bongos because that in B, I just. I don't know. Okay, but we'll, I, uh, we'll talk about it just only because we're like, this sucked. No one remembered it. It was almost instantaneously a failure. And you're like, yeah, that sucked. And you're like, yeah, okay, we'll talk about it. Except the bongos were well received. At the time. Yes. And then completely forgotten about right. it and never, you know what I mean? Right. It's not yes. like the start of a franchise we'll, or something We'll see like how it all shapes yeah. out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got a few to move through. So maybe we'll we'll pick up the pace a little okay. bit. But this one is is one that needs no introduction. So here I go introducing it. it came <laughs> with, we, we all had one. We loved the feeling of it in our hands cold steel against our television wow. screen it's the duck gun the duck hunt gun the zapper the nes zapper yours was made of metal uh my dad couldn't afford the gun so he just gave me one of his from his personal collection we just had a huge collection of tvs yeah and a lot of ducks <laughs> <laughs> uh, i just taped a dead duck carcass <laughs> to my tv and he's like the duck shoot the duck <laughs> Shoot that that one's alive i know he said <laughs> the dog did the same thing like huh <laughs> um yeah, so this one obviously is a legend. This is yeah. when I think of peripherals. This is this the original one? Like it's pretty close. I yeah. mean, it, it, the the crazy thing about it is it existed at a time when I wouldn't have imagined peripherals were even possible. Uh, like a light gun for a screen that didn't require like what the Nintendo we had, which was uh, uh, like a you know a, a sensor bar and ca- like almost cameras like to see where it was pointing. You didn't have anything except the zapper, mm-hmm. and it knew where you were shooting and and what you were shooting at. It was really really impressive. Yeah, it really is, and it, it is like. A game anyone can play. Yeah. I would say most people have like a real strong awareness of it. Yeah. Uh, and even though it didn't continue on like into some, like there's no modern day duck hunts, like there is a modern day Mario. Right. Uh, it still holds a real cultural resonance. Yes. So I don't know. And it worked. It worked yeah. too, which is like a really impressive thing. It worked really well. Uh, there's a great YouTube video I found. I don't know if I'm going to link to it because I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it again, but it goes over the technology of how it works. And it was incredibly impressive, wildly intuitive. And yeah. uh, and I don't know, like I'm tempted to put this in S tier just because of how iconic it is. I know that it was only used for one game, yeah. but this was at a time when like I used it for years. Yeah. And Good luck if you're at a party or something and someone has an NES out and there's a duck hunt, like a light gun, the zapper's there. Good luck not playing it. Mm -hmm. You almost, I would, I think more often than not, if you had Guitar Hero and Duck Hunt next to each other at a party, more often than not, people are going to go for the Duck Hunt one, at least for a couple rounds. Yeah, it looks cooler too. Yeah. It's also like you're smoking or something like that. Oh, it's, it's so like cool. Because it's a like, gun and guns are cool. Guns are really cool. Don't try it on me. Well, yeah, 100%. First of all, don't take my guns and I'm a cool dead hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, But it's, yeah, mostly it's like, yeah, it's just really cool. That's what Charlton Heston said, right? Don't take my guns out of my cold dead hands. Yeah, he was like, yeah, he's like, I yeah. love duck hunts. He, was, he, he wasn't very eloquent, but I got the no. point. Yeah, yeah. He didn't say very much, but when he said it, it was confusing. <laughs> You damn dirty apes. Don't take it. It's like, what? Uh, Wait, huh? okay. So what do you think? Are you thinking S or A or what? What, what? what is your pitch for this one? I think it's S. Okay. I think it's S. You know, I, I'm trying to come up with an argument. Why not? But like, you're right. The the short, uh, not didn't, wasn't, didn't have a lot of longevity, but like, it was so good. Yes. It worked yes. so well. Okay. Uh, yes for S, as they say. Yes for S. This one is, this one's tough. I, I we're, we're, we're kind of struggling with it a little bit because you and I, Andrew, are not racing boys. No. Uh, we've said that quite often. No. However, we know that people who are racing boys love racing wheels. Now, I wouldn't be able to name t- for you the racing wheel that everyone has to get with with games so this one we're going to try to place somewhere but it's going to come from an uninformed place yeah. much like this podcast yeah yeah 100 yeah, yeah. yeah why start anywhere have, else have you have you uh uh played with racing wheels before in like racing sims or otherwise no other than like arcade settings yeah, which is yeah, not yeah, what yeah. we're really talking about yeah. we're talking about like the home setup of like a a, a desk level yeah. wheel that you put up and like maybe maybe a gift a, a, What's it called? Gear, gear shift, gear shift, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, it's clearly not a racing boy. Um, <laughs> is that I? It's really cool, and I can only imagine makes a racing game infinitely better. Yeah. 
because you're holding a wheel of a car and you're driving a car. Shouldn't yeah. that make it better? You know? And I would say the same thing would be for like, um, like a plane, uh, simulator. Oh, kind sure. Of thing like too. joysticks. Yeah. Like, that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, thing yeah. too. But we're talking about racing. And, and I just, I think it would make it infinitely better, but no, not ton of experience. Yeah. I, I, I actually did buy one on the Xbox 360 for oh. Forza Motorsport. Okay. Uh, that, which I got, I think, I can't remember which number, maybe three or two or something like that. And I played it and it was the kind of thing where I'm like, this is so fucking cool the first time. And then there's this weird, almost like the drums where it's too close to being it without mm-hmm. actually being it that I actually found the, the the almost uncanny valley of it to be a detriment oh, okay. like, i think i'd rather use my controller now but i know that that's sacrilege for people who are playing it do we do we want to or for people who do play racing games do we want to try to place the racing wheel or do we want to abstain from this one i think we have to do an incomplete for this one. okay okay i, I, I agree because no matter what we do if it if we put an s it feels disingenuous yes but if we put a lower it's uninformed because i think it is s to a lot of people and i, I think, think so i think it all depends on whether or not you like racing games and that's tough if you use a racing wheel yeah tell us which one and and tell us where you'd put it. That's true. I want I want this from the the listeners. I also want to hear the pros and cons of it because yes. I want to hear what works and what doesn't. Um, um, because here here would be my, here would be my thinking if we were to rate it. Um, if you whether you play guitar or not, you can enjoy playing Guitar Hero, and that's like a fun thing to do. Whether you like racing games or not, doesn't mean you're going to want to play a racing game just because you have a racing wheel if Mm. that makes sense you either like the games or you don't it's not drawing in an additional crowd and i think that that is a detriment but it is again such an iconic piece and almost essential piece i think to people who who do play racing games that maybe it would be up there but i don't know i wouldn't feel comfortable putting it one way or another i feel like i'm going to be wrong no matter what i would agree with you yeah so i think yeah that that, that's we will we'll abstain and we will leave it to the masses we will leave it to the masses votes uh just like the masses all wanted to get their hands after after the the movie the wizard on a power glove power glove the power glove this one was recommended by at lee coolable on twitter uh thanks for the recommendation uh what an iconic uh accessory this was right the best right yeah you wore a glove and you got to control the video game with your hands Ooh, kind of kind of and <laughs> also not really barely <laughs> yes <laughs> the idea again is really cool very and it cool. became a collector's piece but not because it was good because it was bad yeah so this is one that i i think that as iconic as it is i want to rank it lower than the chainsaw controller because it was less functional than that and i know that it's i know that a lot of people are going to want to say like no it's s tier because it's so bad I think functionality has to play a larger yeah, role in yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and as a result, I'm I'm thinking F tier, if I'm being honest. We put the chainsaw in at C for reference. Yeah, okay. I think I'd be okay with F because the only thing you know about it is looking at it and you go, fuck yeah. Yes. And it, what you think it can do. And then you see what it can do mm-hmm. and you're like, no, bad. And so, yeah, I, I don't, I, I think you're, no, I think F is right. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's, let's put that in the, in the F tier. Um, sorry to Hayden Christensen and the wizard. Um, he's not in the wizard. Isn't he in the wizard? No, that's too, I think it's like Sean Astin or something like that, or, uh, like one of the guys from wonder years or something. Maybe I'm going to look it up at some point. <laughs> um, Tyler Perry, Tyler Perry, <laughs> Tyler Perry was definitely in the wizard. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Let's, let's go, uh, let's go with, uh, with a fun one here. This is one that's very near and dear to my heart because the console itself that it, that it was on was very near and dear to my heart. The virtual memory unit, the VMU for the Dreamcast. Oh yeah. Okay. So a memory card that plugs into the controller, it saves your progress, but you could take it out and use it almost as like a Tamagotchi or, or some sort of accessory that you could use outside of the game that you could plug back in and it would inform the game or change the game in some way mm-hmm. the example being with uh with um sonic adventure yeah you can put a uh i can't remember what they were called they were these little animals someone screaming at their at their headphones right now which don't do in public yeah um you would you but would do say donkey Kong bongos do say donkey Kong bongos you have to say that on on whatever form of public transit you're on do right you want to find out if somebody else on your bus is listening to the retrograde podcast uh-huh say loudly just and confidently just look around and go Donkey Konga Bongos. Donkey Konga Bongos. Everyone's going to stare at you. No one says anything. You go, okay. And okay. You sit back down. Totally fine. But D- somebody else might be like, hey, D-pad. Yeah. 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 We know yeah. you. Yeah. We know you. We, we understand. We're listening to the same thing at the same time. Imagine you were sitting on the bus and two people at the same time said Donkey Konga Bongos. <laughs> I think they have to get married. I think you have to get I married. I think legally that. Like, legally, you owe it to us. <laughs> um, 
So we've got uh, 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 the virtual memory unit. Yeah. Um, I loved this thing. I think it was so far ahead of its time. Sorry, with Sonic Adventure, you would put these little animals on it and it would essentially become like a like a, a Tamagotchi almost. A Tamagotchi, you yeah. would take care of it. You would raise it. You would feed it. You could play games with it. And when you put it back in, your little pet would show back up in Sonic Adventure in whatever customization that you applied to it having grown in some way and been raised in some way. I thought it was really cool. Yeah. It was, it reminded me of one of those like, or just like the Dreamcast itself where it was like almost too ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. It was like too cool uh, for school. You yeah. Um, but I, I, I love this one. I know it's not S tier, but my recommendation would be a really, yes, it's, it, this is, wow. it was functional. It did exactly what it promised to do. It, not much. <laughs> well, <laughs> In the way that a lot of peripherals didn't do much at okay. that time. And I know that that's... But Bite the, your tongue with Donkey Kong Bongos. Donkey Kong Bongos are a B. <laughs> no, I could... I, I, if you if you were... If you felt strongly about putting it in a B... Um, no, like this is something you are much more passionate about than I am. And it's, yeah. and, and it's not like I am equally passionate going like, I hated it, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, then yeah, it'd yeah, be yeah. one thing, but I think mine's more like apathy. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so yeah, no, that's fine. If you want to put A, that's, that's okay. totally okay. I think, I think that would, I think that would make sense here, uh, uh, to put it in A. I think that's kind of a nice one. Uh, and that rounds it out. We have two in each category right now. Right. Andrew. Uh, and we still have two, three, four, five, six, oh my seven, God. eight, nine to go. Uh, or more, actually, depending on how much we wanted to do. I'm kind of proposing that we take a break here. Yeah. And we do the rest of these. We finish off the tier list. Okay. Wow. Another week. Part two. Yeah. And we can wow. kind of get some some thoughts from our listeners on where we're at so far. Maybe some additional ones. We'll get, get a groundswell of support yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it seems good. It seems like we've got a, a nice, even spread right yeah. now and a lot more to go. Do you want to recap where we're at right now? Let's do it. In the in the F tier so far, mm -hmm. we have the Tony Hawk Pro Skater skateboard. We've got the Power Glove. Right. Uh, in the C tier, we have the Chainsaw Controller and the Game Boy Camera slash Printer. In the B tier, we have uh, the Guitar Hero slash Rock Band Drum Kit, but we're using the uh, the the Rock Band Drum Kit for that. The Donkey Konga Bongos. Donkey Konga Bongos. Thank you very much. In the A tier, we have the N64 Rumble Pack and the VMU from Dreamcast. I actually think that's very fitting. I think mm -hmm. there's a, a very deep comparison between those two technologies. Yeah, okay. Uh, put them in the controller. They served a purpose. They're no longer not, no longer necessary because standard is uh, uh, controllers have uh, uh, memory support right. and rumble. That's true. Um, and then in the S tier, we have the Guitaro, Guitaro, Guitar Guitaro. Tier, slash Rock Band Guitar and the Duck Hunt gun zapper I, have, I feel really good about those i feel good about these two and, and we have a lot of really good ones left to do andrew what, what do you think about that that idea of, of taking a break and, and making this a two-parter we have so much more we don't want to rush through it so yeah. we're going to take our time and we also don't want this episode to be three hours long and so i also like that we did this pretty much like uh denny villeneuve from uh, an earlier episode <laughs> in dune and uh and uh, and spider-man into the spider-verse uh, or across the spider-verse yes. where we you didn't know you were coming for a part one but part two is coming soon <laughs> so yeah we're gonna do that and you know what we'll also say that like keep sending your suggestions in we can add anything else that you guys yeah. wanted to really see we can do this Mar march madness style where you're adding one final yep. final spot in so just keep letting us know and uh and until then you know well before we go I did want to say I did want to say a a, a, a quick shout out to a listener oh. that sent us some mail. So we've got uh, Eli reached out to us the retrograde podcast at gmail.com. That seems to be like it's becoming the main uh, uh, source of interaction where if people have recommendations for topics or they want to submit their own lists or their own tier lists or, you know, in this case, it was Eli commenting on our least favorite games of all time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do that. We'll, we'll we'll try to get to as many as we can. We usually try to do one per episode, but if there's a backlog, we'll open up the, the, the floodgates and do a whole listener question episode but eli reached out to us the retro retrograde podcast oh wow you okay <sighs> take your time take your time take it take, take, take my what take you it. fucking idiot <laughs> we can't speak you bitch God, i was trying to be nice to you too <laughs> god damn it uh uh eli says in terms of his least favorite games of all time to the retrograde podcast at gmail.com <laughs> assassin's creed oh. all of them not oh. a single one has made me excited, except I do sort of like the history slash walking tour feature in Odyssey because it's awesome to see how much time and thought went into getting that part right. Kind of agree with that. There's yep. an element of Assassin's Creed that I love. So he keeps playing them, though? That's a good so question. Like, he like. hates all of them. Yeah. But I've bought every single one and yes. I've played to completion every single one. And I really like Odyssey's history. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe just stop playing them. Yeah, like Eli, do things you like. 
Well, that's 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 a big ask too because uh, he is listening to this podcast. Mm, Clearly, he does he does tough. like to torture himself yes. a little bit. Uh, and then the other one that he said was, and this is this is going to be wild for you, Tony Hawk's pro skater. Andrew, okay. well, Andrew's eye roll you was can, audible there. You can stop reading at this point. <laughs> he says, uh, uh, mainly because my first exposure to the Tony Hawk game fr- franchise was Tony Hawk's Underground, and I loved the fact that you could get off your skateboard and walk around, and there was a narrative to it, rather than just being trapped on a skateboard with goals to achieve. So it seems oh. like he first had more freedom and then went back to try to play right. the originals. So that I do kind of understand. I I, I do also think... Um, so I'm going to talk to Eli right now, if you don't mind, Andrew. Yeah. So Eli... If you're listening to us on your phone, um, if you pull up, I'm assuming Spotify or something like that. Sure. There is our, uh, you know, the retrograde um, um, homepage. Mm. There's a, a follow button. Mm-hmm. And I want you to touch that until it says unfollow. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, Eli really likes in, wa- in games, walking around. Yes. He's between the two things he hates. Favorite part was walking around. That's true. Yeah. And you you'd love a walking simulator. You're like, have you played Edith Finch? I yeah, feel like come you'd on. love it. You'd love it. It's a lot of walking around. Uh, no, but I appreciate yeah. you reaching out. Eli. Oh, sorry. Also said bloody roar. Just not a fighting boy. He says, which, which I understand as well. A lot yeah. of fighting games just didn't kind of get their teeth Tough. into me and bloody roar. Yeah. That's, I don't want anything roaring if it got its teeth into me. No, it's that's gonna hurt gross. even more. Yeah. Uh, but Eli did have something nice to say. Awesome episode this week. This is the least favorite game ones. Personally, my list of uh, least favorites would be, and then got into. Oh, well, thank you very much, much for the email, Eli. So, if you have a list of your own, or you want to recommend a, a list for us to do on the episode, feel free to reach out to us. The Retrograde Podcast at Gmail dot com. Ticket Tim. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so look out for part two as we name more insane things that you used to attach to your video game consoles. But mm-hmm. until then, we love every single one of you and we can't wait to talk to you soon. My name is Andrew Baskin. With me as always, it's the bad boy of podcasting, Mr. Bebop himself. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus yeah, her and worth. You had a bad and good podcast. Game over. We got that part right. And a very, very happy birthday. <laughs> <for you. laughs> Furnished by Sad Styles Productions. You know, there was never a part two. One of the hosts died. <laughs> hey, what is dying on air? It was crazy.